The U.S. is rich in volcanic fields, and the U.S. arid southwest west landscapes are dotted with bright lights of a lava fountain. This is from uh, USGS, the uh, Caldera Chronicles, released March 29th, 2021. Volcanoes in Iceland, Italy, and Guatemala have put on displays that are captivating audiences worldwide right now. But do you know that the same sort of activity could also occur in the southwestern United States? There's no shortage of spectacular volcanic footage available these days. In the past few weeks, we've seen a fissure eruption in Geldinga Dalur volcano in Iceland, grown into spatter cones surrounding, surrounded by lava flow field, 5,000 feet high lava fountains from Sicily's Mount Etna, and ash plumes rocketing up to greater than 13,000 feet above Pacaya volcano in Guatemala. All of these represent possible events that could occur during the next eruption from a volcanic field in the southwestern United States. There are thousands of volcanic features distributed throughout the southwest United States, which are grouped together in volcanic fields. The USGS arm of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, is responsible for monitoring and reporting any potential hazards associated with resurgence of volcanic activity in this region. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Over the past hundred or so years of volcanic research in the contiguous United States, there's been a larger focus on the stratovolcanoes of the Cascade Range and massive calderas of the Yellowstone and Long Valley supervolcanoes than the cinder cones and lava flows of the Southwest. This is due in large part to the greater hazard these large volcanoes, that can give a super eruption of course, pose to nearby population centers. This means we know relatively little about eruption timing for the majority of U.S. volcanic fields. Even so, the sparse geologic evidence we do know suggests that one cinder cone and lava flow type eruption every 700 years is a typical volcanic field, meaning that it's more likely there will be an eruption from one of these fields during the next decades than an eruption from most Cascade volcanoes with the exception, of course, of Mount St. Helens, the most active volcano in the Cascades range by far. So what might such an eruption look like? The recent newsworthy eruptions are excellent analogs for scenarios that can occur during the next eruptions in the southwest United States. In Iceland, red-orange lava is roiling from, uh, forth from the double-vented spatter cone that feeds the surrounding lava field, Volcanic gases are degrading air quality at and down the wind from the eruption site. Fortunately, activity is confined to a low-lying area, which is keeping the flows from advancing very far from the eruption source. The Pacaya volcano in Guatemala has been rocketing blebs of lava into the air and sending lava flows down the volcano's flanks for several years. Last week, an increase in eruption explosive activity sent volcanic ash plumes to an altitude of 13,000 feet, ash clouds drifted uh, towards the airport in Guatemala City, and ashfall coated the runways and parking and parked airplanes. And because volcanic ash is highly corrosive and can foul jet engines, government officials closed the airport. And on the island of Sicily in Italy, Mount Etna, the Mount Etna volcano has been putting on spectacular displays of fountain in lava that feed lava flows down the flank. Occasionally, explosive paroxysms send ash clouds into the atmosphere above the volcano. Now, all of these volcanoes are erupting magma with a composition basalt to basaltic andesite that is similar to the most common type of southwest USA volcanoes. Unlike larger volcanoes with long-lived magma storage chambers, magma-feeding cinder cones rises quickly from the mantle 
and uh, is not typically stored for a very long time in Earth's crust. Most often, no obvious volcano exists prior to the eruption, as in Iceland. Magma rises through the crust through a path of least resistance and breaks through to the surface along a fracture. Because of this, geophysical instruments are not our best tool to detect the lead-up eruptions in, in uh, the dispersed volcanic fields. Seismometers detect rocks fracturing as magma moves, and GPS receivers and satellite imagery provide microscopic measurements of how and where the ground surface deforms in response to magma migration. Eruptions in volcanic fields, like those of the southwest, can last for days to years. In 1943, the 1943 eruption of Paricutin in Mexico, which lasted for nine years, is a good example of what could occur in the U.S. Such an eruption today could directly impact nearby communities, of course, also air traffic, water reservoirs, transportation corridors, and communication systems. Early stages of activity would probably be similar to what we've seen recently in Iceland, low fountains of cauldron-like vents feeding lava flows that reach hundreds of thousands of meters away from their source. Ground topography and duration of eruption dictates how far flows will travel, that anything in their path is overrun or burned, including highways, power lines, railroads, buildings, waterways, everything. As eruptions progress, lava fountains could grow to hundreds of meters high and loft fine ash into the air. So they can create, at least lava flows can create mountains, of course, similar to what has occurred at Etna and Pacaya in Guatemala for the past month. Occasionally, explosions of finer ash could send plumes to altitudes used by commercial aircraft, which could close airspace and impact U.S. air traffic. Ashfall can be cleaned up, but even small amounts can damage wastewater systems, air conditioning and heating systems, and agriculture and livestock. These eruptions emit tons of sulfur dioxide and would degrade downwind air quality. There are many places to view the volcanic past of the American Southwest and to contemplate the region's volcanic future. For example, at McCarty's flow in the Zuni Bandera volcanic field in west central New Mexico, as part of the El Malpai National Monument, Sunset Crater Volcanic National Monument in Arizona, located within the active San Francisco volcanic field, the Uncaret volcanic field in north, is north of the western portion of the Grand Canyon where lava flows poured into and repeatedly dammed the Colorado River. The recent eruptions in Iceland, Italy, and Guatemala have put on spectacular displays of volcanic power. Evidence for similar activity is preserved across the American Southwest, and what happened once will certainly happen again. This is by usgs.gov, and I'll leave a link, a link below for you, the Caldera Chronicles and uh, release date March 29. So, you know, the U.S. is full of volcanic fields and volcanoes, even in the Northeast, around Maine. Maine has five volcanoes right there. Anyway, please leave your comments and thank you for your support.